Alex is doing out in uh, Thamesdon in Surrey and uh, this is one of our hives and um, have you got any questions about the Green Mark side of things? Because we were quite lucky in um, getting certified uh, for the Green Mark uh, Level 1 I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Level 1 so far. But, um, How we'll did you find the Level 1? Um, not too bad. I must admit I did read the beginning of the website and then I thought this isn't going to be for me. Yeah. It was quite, um, seemed quite onerous at the time. But then I thought let's reverse it, let's do the last passage first and work forward and it, and it was, was fine then. Yeah, okay, so it simplified the process when you went backwards. <laughs> That's right, I know it sounds a bit back to front, but um, the other questions further on were yeah. easier for me to complete. Yeah, so they, did they link to what you do here? So oh, yes. what do you do here? Um, well, we, we, um, we, we rewild colonies, we, we, ha we ha host them, we um, bring them in from wherever they've spawned from or where it trees. We've got an example of a tree bee colony over there that is an ex woodpecker nest from a pine tree yeah. um, that a uh, tree surgeon contacted me about and said, well, can you save these because the owner wants them to be looked, looked after. So he literally had a wheelbarrow, two metres worth of pine tree, 50,000 bees in here, and they're still, they're, that was five years ago and they're still living there now. Oh, so they're pretty happy with their location. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they will readjust, they're absolutely fine. Did you identify with the Green Mark framework anywhere that you could improve, or you already knew what you were doing amazing? Like um, wild stars, it's great stars. I think it's going to be mainly at our, at our offices to improve yeah. on uh, energy savings and reduce consumption. Yeah. That's what it's going to be, and um, waste treatment as well. We didn't really think about um, waste quite so much as um, it was pointed out to us in the... Uh, yeah. It's usually the forgotten part of yeah. everyone's operation. We do a lot of recycling of um, reuse of um, uh, things that you wouldn't anticipate with beehives. Like if I just lift this off, you can see inside that the interior uh, recycled polystyrene um, and that is proved to be great for the bees they love it um, keeps them warm yeah because this is a double skinned hive as they call it and outside WPC traditional and inside would be a wooden manufactured interior okay um, but we've gone for a polystyrene recycled interior and the bees love it and um, in a minute we'll take the um, camera inside and you can see how they've been growing the growing their comb in fact, actually, uh, if you look down there, you can see where they've built an avenue for going down. Um, there's horizontals, and there's triangular, and then there's an access point. And that doesn't look too much like an access point, but, but, but it is. It's circular, it's not straight. So this is all, all quite exciting, actually, because it's May soon. It's last week of April now, and by May, they will have completely filled this box with new comb if we don't put some sort of format in there for them to follow. Um, we're not really into... Uh, producing gallons of honey for food only, as is most uh, beekeepers, but um, yeah, we re-wild, re, re capture swarms, give them a home to go to, yeah. breed new, and we're looking for indigenous gene stock that's natural and part of the habitats of uh, Great Britain. Oh, so um, you're keeping native species in and sustainable right. growth? Yeah, we don't use foreign imported queen bees um, at all, so uh, it's all from a sustainable, ongoing, long-term point of view. So what other questions have you got? So, you are talking about your offices, what else will you be looking into? I think you talked about some renewable energy sources? Yeah, we really, we are at the moment getting quotes for um, solar panel, and um, that will be in by August. Uh, we'll go for just a generation system to start with, and then if that proves that there's a lot overflowing to the grid, we'll put batteries in to save that and reuse it for ourselves. What inspired you to do the renewable energy source? Um, there's just so much going on out there at the moment where people, are, the governments are trying to decarbonise, but it's got to be done out there on the street at yeah. ground level by individuals. Otherwise, a grassroots level. That's right. That's right. A grassroots level. People, are, individually, people will make a difference. Yeah. If they take take up the cause and do something, then collectively you'll get a much better outcome. Well, indeed, <laughs> this will be advertised. There's other projects coming on that are going to be marketed and sold to commercial companies so, so that they can actually join in the, the green revolution and um, the decarbonisation. Yeah, that's fabulous. Um, so the renewable journey is great, but what else are you looking forward to on your sustainability journey? Uh, recycling wastewater. We take all the water off the roofs now and I've got a pond in the garden which uh, um, we pump out and use on the, on the, on the, on the lawn and on the vegetable patch and things and then wait for the uh, water off the roof to re refill it again. Plus it provides fresh water for the pond, so it does it a lot of good. So. <laughs> Very sustainable. Yeah. We've grown fruit trees, um, 
there's the, the waste recycling now that we're look, get, getting more into compost heaps. Um, it, it's easy to do. I say that for people who've got a house and have got a back garden, but and know what they're doing. Well, that's right. But um, it's flats. They and can't the, do it. And the small residences that have got to try and find, find something. They've got, local, they've got little areas that can, like their balconies, they put wildflowers there and that sort of thing. But if you don't have a balcony, it's a few point plant. It's still better than nothing. Yeah, when we went to New Zealand um, just before the first lockdown, and lucky we did, and on the way back through Hong Kong, uh, we saw facades completely green. Yeah. All balconies. There was so much green that you could, you, could, you could hardly see the balcony. You couldn't see the, the gaps between either. It was hanging trellising, it was fantastic. We uh, well, we've changed the culture, yeah. I'm afraid. Change the culture, which will come, I'm sure. In time. Yeah. Well, this will help. Yeah, we're here to help you through your journey and make sure that you go through one, two and three. Yep. And when you're at three, you have a fully documented EMS system and your bees will be really, really happy. Well, we had um, to go one step further on the um, stage two. We had an EPC assessment done this morning. Oh, that's good. Uh, energy performance certificate for the house, for the um, home office. So if that's a D, then we'll qualify for potential subsidies on um, solar, 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 I think, are still out there. Loft insulation was used, to, so uh, we can have that done. Yeah, so there's lots that's going to go towards this stage two. Good. So you're looking forward to doing your stage two. I am indeed.